Anyhow, good afternoon. Wow, it is uh, so great to see so many people out on a, just a wonderful sunny day. Uh, in the middle of record temperatures, uh, it's just awesome that you guys are here today and uh, we certainly appreciate that. I want to, uh, of course, thank the Chamber of Commerce for putting this together today. Uh, we have a newly elected Chamber President, Mr. Bob Spinks. Thank you. And I want to thank the Light of Hearts for hosting us. Uh, as usual, yeah. as usual, they do a terrific job, and this, this is just such a great place and such a gem in our community to have this facility here. And I'd like to introduce a brand new uh, director of Light of Hearts, Ms. Brianna Cavalier. Yes, thank you. And then I, I want to give a shout out to uh, a couple of our uh, political figures that couldn't be here. Uh, Representative uh, Juanita Brent, I just saw her Monday and uh, they went and had caucus meetings for today. They gave them a day and a half notice, said you had to be in Columbus. So she was planning on being here and uh, like I say she was just sworn in this month and she's already running full speed ahead and I, I think we're going to have a real good uh, representative there and it's going to work closely with us and I also have her personal cell phone number so I told her we expect a lot of good things from Columbus now and uh, our judges uh, Brian Melling and Michelle Paris they are down in Columbus for some kind of judge school I think maybe Brian could teach it but I don't know what it's for but unfortunately they're there because they're normally there because you know the city and the courts work together so well and uh, we've had such a great relationship over the years and uh, it's, it's always an honor to have those people here and uh, like I say unfortunately they couldn't make it and I'd like to also introduce some of my good friends from our, our neighboring cities Mayor Annette Blackwell from Maple Heights Mayor Vic Kolova from Garfield. And Mayor Fletcher Berger from Bedford Heights. I, I really thank them for being here because uh, we, we work together very closely with our, our communities. And uh, we have to because what's good for one community spills over and is good for the, the next community. And, and we work together, we communicate a lot and we help each other out whenever we can and uh, uh, it's just a great relationship and I'm, I'm very honored that uh, the mayors are here today I really appreciate it and we have our uh, City Council let me start with the former senior member of council Marilyn Zalata retired <laughs> oh yeah this was your second home up here I know you like you were always up here at the villa. And we have Ward 1, Sandy Spinks. <laughs> Ward 2, Wally Janudis. <laughs> Ward 3, Vic Fluharty. <laughs> uh, Ward 4, Paula Mizak, <laughs> who is also our vice mayor. Ward 5, Heather Rhodes. <laughs> and Ward 6, Don Saunders. Right in the back. And a visiting councilman, Mr. Harvey Brown, my brother from Bedford Heights. We appreciate them being here today. And from the school board, we have Dr. Andrea Selico, the superintendent. Board member Tim Tench. Uh, do we have any other board? Oh, I'm sorry, Joe Mesnick. He's hiding. He's hiding, yeah. It's not often I miss you, Joe. And, and we have the uh, administration from the, the, the uh, city schools, uh, Jerry Zagrebic and 
and Beth Russell and uh, a whole bunch of other. We have some principals here. It's just terrific. If all the school people just wave so we know you're here. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. And I do on a, uh, a sad night, a uh, sad note, uh, have to announce the uh, passing of Dale Witt, longtime treasurer of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, I think his services are tomorrow, uh, tomorrow and Friday. So uh, check the newspaper for that. But uh, yeah, Dale was a great member of the Chamber, and, and we appreciate all he did for the Chamber over all these years. And we also have many of our, our business leaders here. It's just awesome to see all of you guys here too. And, uh, but I want to give a, a special welcome to all our guests, all our citizens and business owners that came out today in this record-breaking cold, coldest weather in decades, and, and here we are. And thank you so much for being here. Uh, it's just great to see you. And you know, you guys are the reason that city council, the city administration, and all our employees come to work every day is just to serve the public and, and you people, day in and day out. Uh, you're the reason we do what we do. And thanks for just living here and working here. Uh, I can't tell you how much we appreciate the support we get from all of you. And uh, it's just, just amazing. Uh, we couldn't do anything without you guys here. So I appreciate all that. Yeah, as uh, one of my former fellow firefighters used to say, the days drag, but the years fly by. That's so true. And 2018 was no exception. It just seems like, boom, it's gone. It was here, gone, so fast. Uh, and this is already my sixth State of the City address. It, doesn't seem possible. Seems like it just started. And uh, it doesn't seem that long ago we were worried about Y2K. And here it's 2019 already. But it was a good and a productive year. Uh, we met our goal of adding three additional police officers to the department, uh, plus an additional canine officer. Uh, we added a part time housing inspector to our building department, and we did a lot of energy upgrades to our, our city facilities and uh, and Mike will get into some more detail on all that in a minute but I'm truly excited about 2019 this I believe is going to be a banner year for the city of Bedford um, and I need to give a shout out to the men and women of the councils and administration that have gone before us uh, they laid a great foundation for us to build on Mayor Posick guided steady ship to get us through some tough, turbulent times in our city. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. And, uh, but I'm not going to dwell on our past problems, because today is a time to look towards a bright future, uh, one that is full of hope and action to drive our city forward. And, uh, Mike, if you want to start off with some of our highlights from 2018, and then we'll, we'll move on from there. Mike Malice. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And again, I just want to reiterate to everyone here, I, I truly appreciate you coming out in this uh, chilly weather today. Not the most ideal, um, although there's a lot here that we can talk about. Um, may drag it on a little, just to be honest. I don't want to go back outside, so. <laughs> Um, we're going to go through some of these highlights. I'm not going to read item by item. This is, will be available. Um, video, it's obviously being recorded. We'll have it up on our website. But you can definitely see some of the things that, you know, we've accomplished and some of the things that we're working on in the future. You know, last year we stood up here and the mayor and I and we talked about a plan, a plan for the future. How are we going to address critical issues? How are we going to balance that budget? How are we going to start doing streets again? I'm happy to say that we have absolutely delivered on each and every one of those things that we set out to do when we spoke last January. As the mayor said, we hired three additional police officers, as we've promised. We've brought back our uh, street infrastructure program 
and invested um, $400,000, which will be done every single year. That was brought back, um, previously cut in 07. We've worked to, um, obviously in 2019, our, our budget is balanced. There is no deficit. We are not going in that direction anymore. And, and obviously there's some things that we do know that we have to address. And, and we'll get into it in a little bit, but uh, you know, one of them is obviously an aging fleet, an aging fleet of vehicles. You know, we've gotten by and you can purchase PD cruisers and, and pickup trucks, um, and that we've been able to do. But when you really get into some of the larger items, how are we going to replace a fire engine? How are we going to replace a squad? How are we going to replace a backhaul piece of equipment at the service department? You know, we're currently working, and, and we're lucky enough, and I'll, I'll acknowledge uh, him uh, more later, but, you know, Frank, our, our finance wizard, uh, we are working through that plan now to figure out how are we going to address those things in the very near future. Getting into some of the, the individual departments, I, I want to acknowledge Chief Dave Nagy and Assistant Chief Sean Solar uh, with our fire department. Those guys and, and women do an exceptional job, and it starts from the top. And Sean and Dave, they, they lead a tremendous group of individuals. They stress training. And it shows. And I think if each and every one of you or a family member have, have had an instance or an issue where you've had to rely on them, um, they deliver. And it, it kind of struck home a little bit. We, I, I have a dear friend that um, has been widowed. She lives in a neighboring city, and she's kind of struggling a little bit. And she stopped in, I want to say it was in the summer, and she, very sweet. She said, is there any way I can just have Bedford fire come to my house when I have an issue. And uh, I think that says a lot for our guys. And, and Sean and Dave, not, we can't do that, but um, well done. I, I think the, you know, the public knows you guys do an outstanding job. Um, you see we have 27 line firefighters, 25 of them are paramedics. A lot of training goes into that. You know, our service calls, we, we definitely have been seeing an increase. Um, this past year it kind of leveled off. But you can definitely identify 71% of those calls are life support rescue responses. Our, our squad and, and those expertise of the expertise of our staff is definitely coming into play. And that number most likely will continue to rise. Some of our goals, and I, I talked about it, um, obviously regionalization, it's a big thing. Um, I think each and every one of you and, um, will agree especially safety forces. Um, partnering with CVD has been tremendous. Um, it's gone well. We'll continue to look at other regional initiatives. Um, I commend City Council for supporting that decision. Um, and again, um, definitely, definitely a, a great partnership with them. Our, our fleet, you know, we'll talk about uh, fire department right now. You can see some of the, the ages of the equipment. You know, we're to, simply to replace two of those items is you know, upwards of a million dollars. And we're right now looking at a plan of how we're gonna go about addressing that. And it's something that we hope to have a plan um, in front of council by later this year and hopefully move forward in that direction. Same with our mutual aid. Chief Nagy does a great job in monitoring that. We're there and we have a great partnership, as the mayor said, with our neighbors, Bedford Heights, Maple Heights, Garfield, Oakwood, Walton Hills. If, um, all of those communities, obviously, we have to rely on them at times, uh, and they rely on us, and that's what a great partnership does. We'll monitor that. Um, obviously, we want to make sure there, there, there has to be that balance. But Chief and, and, and Assistant Chief do a great job. Our police department, Chief Stemple, Deputy Chief Sutz, can't speak any more highly of them as well. And, and, and a lot of that starts with, it all starts at the top. And we get quality people here that are part of our safety forces, people that want to stay, and people that are trained. And we don't have a big turnover. Although in police, we, we, we had a little bit this year due to some retirements and, and other, uh, other circumstances. But that says a lot as far as people wanting to be uh, involved in this community. We've worked to establish those three additional officers as we've set out to do. 
Um, one of our uh, officers that was going through the academy, I believe, graduated last week. Chief Stemple was there with him, um, and he will soon be out training. Our idea is, obviously, we want as, what we refer to as boots on the ground. We want, by being full staffed, it's going to allow us the opportunity to be, get more involved, more patrolling in our neighborhoods, more presence, and a way to address some of those quality of life items that we often talk about. We've been fortunate enough, and we talk about partnerships, you know, I will reference further later on is, is the Bedford Auto Mile. You know, they stepped up about, geez, it's been five years. I didn't think it was that long, but it's been about five years since they um, donated right around $25,000 to allow us to resurrect our canine unit. And it's been an absolute asset. What they did, they turned around again last year and they contributed to funding the second canine unit. So currently we have two units on, um, seven days a week, they're altered shifts. And to have an asset like that in our own department and for our community is, um, you know, beyond words can express. So I thank that group. Same with Broadway Cyclery. You know, we used to have and we had the, the staffing to have bike patrol. And we would monitor parks and we'd be in the downtown historic district just for that added presence. And I believe Laura Hewlett is here today from Broadway Cyclery. They donated um, a brand new outfitted bike for our PD and we're going to be rolling out that patrol later in 2019. So thank you. I appreciate, we appreciate that. You know, but we, we talked about, you know, restructuring, restructuring some of the administrative duties and it all stems around getting more boots on the ground. We want to be in the community for, for the good and the bad. We'll talk about some of the good in, in, in a little bit. Um, actually, well, we'll come back to that one. Uh, actually, if you see goals, um, the third item down, I, I want to acknowledge, um, and I, I don't believe she's here, but I definitely want to acknowledge Dr. Selico and the schools and our police and our fire and Eileen Molnar. Eileen Molnar is a, um, and forgive me if I, if I get her title right, she's head lunch lady at, at Central School, and she saw a program where police and fire and safety forces interact with children on a, on a weekly basis and come in and have lunch. And she thought it'd be a good idea and the school supported that. And a couple weeks ago, our, our staff visited Central. And listen, when, when you walk in, and especially with police, and you have a, a gun and kids can be standoffish, and um, by the end of that lunch period, there were selfies, there were hugs, and it, absolutely outstanding and any interaction that we can have with our youth as far as a positive interaction extends well beyond what any of us can imagine and that extends into the household so I want to commend Eileen the schools Chief Stemple Chief Nagy and, and being involved in that and that program is actually going to expand to involve each and every one of our communities Bedford Heights Oakwood Walton Hills that's tremendous to have that interaction with our youth. So I, I, I commend you guys for all of that, and ladies. We talk about the quality of life items, definitely something that we're working on, um, and we're going to look at addressing that with the additional patrols that we spoke about. That is what those additional officers will help us do. As we move into the service department and public works, Clint Beller, our director, and our assistant, Sean Francis, Obviously, they have a, a, a small staff. Um, a lot of our departments, to be quite honest with you, we're very lean, but we're very efficient. And if you see these items back here of what they're task, tasked to do on a daily basis, um, it's, it's remarkable. And do we get to everything at the snap of a finger? No, um, but we get to it. And to, do, to have things as far as in-house um, chipper, leaf, all of those items, maintaining the 50 miles of roadway. Um, tremendous, tremendous job. If you see some of the projects that we completed in 18, and when, you know, when we walk through this, it's kind of like, man, we really forget about all the things that we actually did. Um, we've done a lot. And we've brought back the road program, as I mentioned. One of the other things that I, I think is very significant, and I commend Council for providing the, the funding in the budget, is, you know, we have an, it's an older community. We have very mature trees on our streets, and everybody likes the trees until those roots start getting into our lines. 
And we're not in a position, you know, inner ring suburbs aren't just tearing up sewer lines and replacing them street by street. What we were able to do is we came up with a program and our, our service director and the assistant um, in partnering and collaborating with the county who has the equipment to come in and regularly maintain those roadways and clean out those sewers just to be preventative maintenance. And we started that this year, council supported it, and we actually have it budgeted another $10,000 for 2019, and this will help alleviate some of those issues um, on a regular basis. So thank you, we appreciate the, uh, allowing the service department to begin that new program. We talk about a park dedication uh, and completion that the guys finished at Broadway and Mitchell um, earlier this year, which turned out great. Uh, as well as, you know, in, in collaboration with our police and fire, or with our fire department, our water department, uh, really work to identify um, hydrants. Which hydrants aren't operating as efficiently as they should be? Which are failing? Which should be replaced? And this year, they actually went out in-house and replaced 50 plus hydrants throughout the entire city. And obviously that'll help, obviously they're important. Um, but it shows that that's a four man department, that water department. And by buttoning up some of those items, by buttoning up some of the leaks that we have and experienced, um, I talk about our, our financial wizard there, Frank, he puts out statistics to us every month. And we are at a f uh, seven year low in water loss. What does that mean? We have to purchase water from Cleveland and obviously bill out. Um, to have a seven year low really shows that we have really cleaned up our system. We've done a great job and obviously that's more money that comes into the city that'll ultimately be reinvested into um, our town. And you can see that here. We talk about infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. You see what we're committing to, the, the, the $2 million annually in streets over the next five years. Um, sidewalks. We talked about starting our GIS mapping system, which we started in 2018. And the one item, the big ticket item, because of that water fund and because we're operating it and managing it as efficiently as possible, Union Street needs a new water line. You're obviously going to do water before road. So the administration went in front of council at the last meeting and proposed a project of a million dollars. We would replace that water line from Broadway just past the church here, right across the street. Um, and obviously, um, it's something that's a necessity. That water line is from the 30s, in some places the 20s. Makes no sense to fix a road if you're not going to address what's underneath. And I, I commend Council for supporting that plan. Uh, we will be going out to bid for that project in the upcoming um, months. Once that is completed, which will be at the end of this year, Cuyahoga County is scheduled to come in and repave Union Street. So we're getting into that, we're getting in that direction, which is about time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Obviously there's some other things that, that we're working towards, which is a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication from our employees. Um, Parks and Recreation and moving right along. Um, our director, Aaron Fatch, Aaron is here today, um, and assistant Mike Callahan um, have done a tremendous job. And I, there's a quote I, I use, and it's, it's at the end of this, um, as far as progress and, and little steps each day will, will result in, in big results. And that's what's gonna happen. I mean, these two gentlemen came in, tremendous backgrounds, and we're really starting from the ground up things that we need to change, things that we need to bring current, how we communicate with the public, how we work with the schools, if it's through Peach Jar, if we have a more um, active social media account, all of those things they're doing. Um, you see all the participants, all the, the things that we do. Um, one of our big tasks and challenges this year was Ellenwood. Ellenwood has been under um, some extensive um, construction, if we would say. Um, we went in there needing to clean up asbestos. It's an old school building. We went in there, we did it. We utilized a uh, grant that we received from NOPAC. We did all new lighting, um, office, carpet is being installed this week, um, in classrooms, in the hallway. All of that, all of those things are being done. The office is reconfigured and it is going to be a warm welcome when you get back in there. And our plan is to be in there shortly. 
What we want to do is you'll see then we can start building those additional programs. We hope to get something out to the public later this year as far as brochure of all the things that we intend to do. And I want to, I, I want to commend Aaron and Mike for the, the primary thing is they came into Bedford and the first thing they did was they started building relationships. And if it was with the schools or the library or some of our local businesses um, in downtown, those partnerships are going to pay off. We've already been offering new programs in partnership with um, some of the coaches at the high school that are helping with some of the youth, and the goal is to just continue to expand that. So that open-mindedness, that welcoming uh, mentality is um, appreciated, appreciated uh, and those two gentlemen are doing a tremendous job. Some of those things that I talked about as far as our goals and continuing to build relationships. Our building department, there's uh, Calvin Beverly, our building commissioner, another. We have a small department, works very efficiently um, as far as inspections and things of that nature. There is a number here that I think really speaks to what we've accomplished and where we're going. And that number is right in there. And in 2017, we issued permits on a commercial and residential value of about $12 million worth of investment into town um, for improvements. If you look at last year, we're double. That means not only are our property, property owners investing in their properties, but our businesses are committing to our city. And to see that number double in a year and the things that we have planned, that number is going to continue to go up is a tremendous statistic. And we should not lose sight of that. So, um, although it's added strain on, on Calvin and his staff, um, we are headed in the right direction. Maintaining our neighborhoods, obviously the things that we're going to work on to continuously clean up, we're very, and, and we're, we've established a very strong relationship with Cuyahoga County Land Bank. Um, Calvin and our um, staff member in economic development, Jennifer Kuzma, have worked to, um, we were able to get a 400 $400 plus thousand dollar grant last year for demolitions. We have multiple residential properties that are slated for demolition. We've just recently signed a notice to proceed to the land bank on two of those as well as the Moonglow. Um, and the Moonglow is imperative. We can't begin to market that until they tear that down. And we hope that'll come down in the next couple months. So well done on those two individuals of continuing to look for what types of funds are out there that we can get our hands on, that we can do better things for our town. You see some of our, um, the, the other item here, if you can see at the bottom, I don't know if you can read it, it talks about vacant homes, bank home, bank, bank owned homes, government owned homes. You know, that was, there were communities that that spiked five years ago that were well over a thousand. Um, at the peak, we were probably about three and a quarter. That number has come down to around 250 which I think says a lot for, the, for our housing market as far as it's stabilizing and hopefully we see those prices continue to move uh, upwards. Are we at our 2007 levels? No, um, but I think we're slowly moving in, in the right direction. I referenced Frank and, and Frank Ambosi, our finance director, I think um, Frank's reputation speaks for himself. I couldn't uh, ask to work for a more dedicated and knowledgeable individual. Uh, Jennifer Holland, his assistant, has come on board. She's been here uh, a little over a year and, and has really done a great job. Um, everybody knows Frank. And, you know, each and every one of us have our moments and we debate, but his heart is in it and he knows what we're doing. And we could not be in the position that we're at, that we are at today, um, not even close, if he wasn't the finance director. So, Frank, thank you. Well done. does a tremendous job. Uh, you see some of our numbers of where we finished. Obviously, we still feel that impact as the schools, I'm sure, does as well on the hits from our, our, the state cuts. It's a huge hit, huge hit. And we continue to see that every year. Um, but we're balanced. You know, we have done what we needed to do to have a balanced budget in 19. We have uh, about $4.8 million, $4.7 million uh, set aside in reserve. And we're, the plan is that we will build that up. 
That's why that reserve was in place, and now it's our jobs to build that up. Frank, you see some of the things that, that he's done, um, that we've done. One of the items, and I was looking at some of our, our notes, um, our health insurance. You know, the city's been self-insured regarding our coverage and our cost of our employees for over 25 years. And if you do the analysis, it's, we've saved millions of dollars. Um, the one thing that it pointed out is we made some significant changes two years ago. And those changes are showing cost savings. And our number of what we spent was, it was up there. And it's, in the, it's on the decline. And, you know, this is one of those, Frank and I in our, our, our friendly debates, I, I set out a goal of where we need to be, and he's like, you're out of your mind, we're never gonna get there. But um, I think we are going to come close to our expenses from 2011, 2012. And I, I'll tell you what, in this day, to have an organization who has controlled their health care costs and actually dropped them, I think we're doing a tremendous job. And that starts with the finance department and Frank. So again, well done on that. Um, moving our expenses backwards regarding health care is a, uh, a tremendous accomplishment. Talk to some of the other things that we've done as far as cost saving measures, uh, the partnership we have with a collection agency as far as collecting some of that um, unpaid income tax that, that, that's out there, which is well over a million dollars. Um, we're getting success on that and, and bringing those, those funds in. Um, they do a great job as far as managing that. Economic development, and it, backing up, I, I don't wanna, um, well, economic development, Jennifer Kuzma. Um, Jen's been here a little over a year. Uh, she's also executive director of, of Northeast Ohio for Suburbs. Um, Jennifer, Jen Howland, um, Aaron Fatch, Mike Callahan, these are tremendous individuals that believed in, in Bedford and, and believed in council and believed in the administration to come here and tremendous assets. And, and Jen, Jen is one of them. Um, obviously a, a, a friend, but she, she's got the connection. She knows where to go. What kind of challenge do we have? She knows where to, if it's let's get in touch with the county, let's get in touch with um, the land bank, whatever it is, she knows where to go and um, been an asset for our town. Just this year, I will say she's worked uh, in 2018, I believe. I think we brought in uh, just under $500,000 she brought in in grant funding last year. So not to set the bar high, Jen, but well done. Um, definitely helping us. Zelia Cleveland. Zelia, unfortunately, they couldn't be here today, but they are progressing. Um, last year, we talked about, they were at about 150 employees, and they were planning to hire an additional 100 in 2018, and they in, did, in fact, do that. Um, they are establishing tremendous partnerships throughout the region. This is beyond Bedford. Um, we talk about um, partnerships with um, uh, Case Western Reserve, other universities, uh, scholarship programs, intern programs that they have. Um, they are establishing their presence in, in this area. And they're in the process right now of planning phase two. Phase two is, uh, phase two will include demolition of a portion of their facility, but a reinvestment uh, that will be occurring. And that's gonna be a whole new line. Um, it'll be a bag, a bag type line, um, IV. And I think it proves, along with some of the other things that they've done, that they're planning to be here a very long time. And I believe they're bringing quality people um, to Bedford as far as uh, employees. Moving on to the Bedford Auto Mile. We, we spoke about it. I, I speak about it all the time. Um, I don't have enough words to say uh, regarding that organization. Um, they continue to support what we do. They continue to support um, other organizations in Bedford. They've donated in the past. They're donating uh, in the future. Um, outstanding individuals. And I'm going to uh, embarrass a couple of them. I, I don't know if any others came, so I, I apologize. But Bill Clonaris, um, Jerry and Chris from Mazda of Bedford, you can see right back here, um, that is moving forward. Um, that's their commitment to our town, and that's going to be built, and it's going to be up at the Meadowbrook Center. Um, there's been some challenges along the way, and I'm not, not, not to throw, um, uh, get into that process, but 
I want to I mention them because Jerry said something to me six months ago, and um, you know, this is a family-owned business. It reminds me of Bedford. And Jerry's like, man, my age, I must be out of my mind getting involved in some of this. It's some of the things that they talk about, um, but they're doing it. They're committed, and they believe in this town, um, and I appreciate them. They're always there when the city needs something. Um, so thank you, thank you for making that investment. I, I hope we continue to move forward in that. Um, so I want to acknowledge you guys back there. Thank you. If there's anyone else that came in afterwards from the auto mile, I apologize, um, but huge, huge asset to our city. Uh, you can see some of the, the investments that were made, Acura, Volvo, Alfa Romero, Kia, Hyundai, all of those things are millions of dollars, millions of dollars in construction taking place right now. We talk about Meadowbrook. Um, we are moving forward with that project. As we like to say, you know, there's, there's going to be some uh, hesitation on some um, property owners' parts, um, but what we told them is the train's leaving the station. You're either going to be on board or you can sit off to the sidelines, but we are progressing forward. Last year, we, we were provided an analysis of the 90 acres. We shared that with City Council, um, and we are now moving closer to complete rezoning of all 90 acres at that center. We are seeing new investment. There are, um, Calvin's going through plans examinations now for a dialysis center. We will be welcoming the Ohio BMV there, the title bureau will be there, and the former Walmart's facility, which is owned by uh, industrial commercial properties, they're actively marketing that. It's obviously imperative that we move forward with the rezoning. Um, we are not going to be uh, have the blinders on that, well, this is gonna be solely retail. We know where retail's at. You just gotta watch the news. Um, we need to think outside the box. And we're doing that here, and we're going to see some action very, very shortly. Most of you have seen right behind this facility, uh, Villa San Bernardo is progressing. Uh, we hope, they hope to have that open most likely near the end of 19. Um, huge addition, a great job, Testa is, is building that. It's going to be a senior um, independent living facility, and I think it'll be a great addition to our community. There's many times that we run into seniors still in their house. I'm not leaving my house. I love my house. I love the community. Well, realistically, this might be a better fit. They don't have, we really didn't have a whole lot of options like that. We had some assisted living places, um, but this is solely independent, and this will provide them another option to stay in the town that they really want to stay in. Um, so we're looking forward to that project. One of the things that we finished, actually, and if anybody was, was on a couple weeks ago, um, we quietly launched a complete redesign of the city website. Um, this is kind of a more official announcement. Um, our staff members finished training. Um, tremendous in improvement. And I want to acknowledge uh, a committee of people that really worked on this. Um, they worked on it for three months. Many nights they worked on it at home on their own time. And that's Michelle Hollow, Ani Zagravic, Mike Callahan, um, and Jennifer Kuzma. Sorry, I went blank there for a second. Well done. If you get a chance and navigate through this, um, it, it's much easier to, to get through. I thought the picture was very fitting when one of the staff members placed it on there um, as we're continuing to move forward. But that's Viaduct Park if you go down there. That's what it looks like right now. Um, well done. A lot of work went into that three-month project. Uh, kudos to, to that committee who, who delivered on that. We talk about some of our initiatives, obviously going out and getting grants. Um, Bedford Community Development Corporation. Um, I saw some, we, we have some representatives from that organization here. Uh, former Mayor Posek, Dave Barry, I saw you somewhere. There you are. Um, Brian Monter, um, Mayor Kochi. Um, this is a group that was kind of an uh, organization that was um, not very active, and, and this group got involved. Jen was able to secure a grant, um, and we saw some significant investment in our downtown district. Uh, the grant was for just under $50,000, but it was matching, so we saw a lot of our small businesses put matching dollars up to paint their storefront. Um, if it was coolest, 
if it was the floral shop, if it was chainsaw sales, all of those little businesses really took advantage of this, uh, and it was a good program. Obviously, we want to we want to see that development corporation get to here, um, but we need to start here, and we need to start progressing in the right direction. And I think the group is committed to that. Uh, we look forward to really laying out our plans as we move forward, as far as what are our priorities um, on what we want to see this year, next year, five years down from that. Um, but that group, I, I know they're dedicated and uh, looking forward to working with them. Energy improvements, we referenced Ellenwood, we've referenced um, replacing a generator at the service garage. Um, all of that was done through a NOPEC grant um, that we were able to get last year. We're getting the same grant this year, $50,000. Um, what we've done is we have uh, a company that is in right now, and they're going to be doing a, a full energy audit of all of our municipal buildings. This isn't just Mike sitting in the office one day saying, hey, we'll just replace these lights or that lights. We want that detailed audit to lay out what needs to get replaced and what is the payback on that as far as energy costs. That's what, that, that's what that energy audit's going to do. We're doing that now, we're working with a local company. Once we have that, uh, we will utilize these grant funds and possibly other funds to make those improvements. So again, utilizing other funding that's out there is, is very important. I wanna mention uh, the auto mile again. If, if you recall, we, we had a pending grant application last year for a camera initiative. And there's, there's a handful of cities that, that do this. I, I believe Mayor Kolova has seen great success with it in Garfield, um, where there's cameras in certain areas of town, um, more so as a deterrent. Um, we were working with a company that would actually install 20 to 30 cameras, high-def cameras, license plate cameras. The neat part is they will be directly fed into our PD cruisers. If there's a call, they pull it up, they see, and. and and you deal with issues right like that. And unfortunately, we were unsuccessful in the grant, uh, with the grant. Uh, it's probably about a twenty dollars to $25,000 project. Um, but again, knowing there's value to the community, Bedford Auto Miles stepped up, and they're going to fund that initiative completely this year. So we're going to be installing those and working with a contractor along uh, Broadway and Rockside, and we view this as a pilot. If it works, and if it's definitely something to increase safety in our community, we will work to expand. So again, uh, I want to commend the Auto Mile and, and their commitment to our city. Thank you. <laughs> we had on here uh, last year, and we really couldn't say a whole lot about it, something that we were a little bit excited about, but it was the the limbo of the former Chanel building, it was 30 acres, didn't know what was happening. Um, obviously we know now, the Bedford City School District acquired that. Um, definitely something that the city was for. Um, I think there's tremendous possibilities there. Um, and the one part where we come into play is we are a resource for you. What you need for us as you move forward in developing a strategy for that, the school district and, and the board knows, contact us whatever you need. Tell us to sit on the side, no problem. If you need help with anything, we're here. So thank you for making that investment in our community. I think it'll pay off um, in, in, uh, in many, many areas in, in the future. One of our projects that we're working on this year, and we actually have pending grant applications out there, was we did a study. And, and although, although our city signage and, and wayfinding signs and um, park signs historic district signs, gateway signs, all of those are good, they're nice. Um, I think we could do better. Uh, there's areas where there isn't much consistency to that. Uh, what we did was we, um, in, with the support of Council, again, thank you, um, we engaged a company called Guide Studio. Guide Studios worked with the City of Lakewood, University Circle, City of Sandusky, Kent, as far as looking at an analysis and creating a plan plan for a consistent look for city signage in all those areas. If it's the schools, metro parks, we all talk about Viaduct Park, we really don't know where that's at. This is what this analysis provided. Um, what we're doing is with the proceeds of a couple of land transactions, as well as if we're fortunate enough to get those grants, we will be starting that project this year. 
This is a multi-year project, so look for those new wayfinding signs for the historic district, for parks, for other um, uh, assets that we have in town. We're going to start implementing that. So this is a good thing. There's a small committee that's going to be working on that. Um, Aaron, Jen, Sean Francis, um, and I believe those meetings are starting very, very soon. And we talk about signage, and obviously one of our, our big goals, we've talked about it for a few years now, is finding the funding to move forward with our connector project. We have identified about half of the money needed for that project, and that will connect and, and follow up the demolition of the Moonglow. But it'll create a pedestrian trail along Willis Street. It'll go through Viaduct Park, and it'll cross over what we saw on that homepage of Bedford, the falls. That's about a million dollar project. You know, we work to identify funding for half. We are still pushing forward for that other half. It's gonna be imperative. And I think it'll be a, a definite kickstart um, for what's gonna happen on all that property um, we were able to acquire. I want to touch base on um, one item, and I will, Mayor Kochi is going to jump in here in a second, but, you know, as, as we talk about, and you have successes, and we're talking about some of the good things, you know, there's that old saying, you two steps forward, one step back, and obviously, you have those, those things happen. Um, in, tw in 2008, we were fortunate enough to land a large business, U.S. Bank, um, they brought hundreds of jobs to Bedford. They signed a 10-year lease, and that was primarily to deal with the mortgage crisis. They were restructuring mortgages, loans, 10-year lease. Never fun when that time comes to, comes to pass, and, and it did. Obviously, the lease expired in 18. I think we are in nationally a much different position as far as mortgages and the housing crisis. There was not a need to renew that lease, so they had notified us that they were going to um, be moving on from that facility. Many people forget about that facility. It's actually off Rockside, don't even know where it's at. Um, beautiful campus, beautiful facility, but there we are. We're with an empty building, and we need to look at what we have to do about it. And we don't sit with woe is me. I mentioned someone, to someone earlier, I truly believe that, you know, some people say negativity breeds, po negativity, breeds negativity. That's not how we operate at all. Positivity breeds positivity. And I know our business, business community believe in that, um, our council believes in that, and we're moving forward and we're going to see progress. And the train's leaving the station. You can be with us or you can criticize us, but you'll see where we're going. Um, there's some items up here that I'm going to mention and it'll lead into what Mayor Coach is going to talk about. You see up here, if if anyone had a chance to, to see the Golden Globes or, or things of that nature, there was a pretty significant story and the news, newspapers took it. There's a lot of investment in, in Ohio and it all stems from, from tax credits as far as commercials, television shows, movies, small movies, large movies. We only hear about the large movies, you know, if it's Avengers or whatever it is. But there were almost over a hundred productions there might have been more than that that took place in Ohio last year. Um, you can see uh, part of the thing is the uh, director, the president of the Greater Cleveland Film Commissioner, you know, there's a quote down there and he talks about the amount of individuals that want to come here and invest is tremendous. It's absolutely tremendous. Not a whole lot you're going to do outside when it's negative too, though. <laughs> That's a challenge. Um, but they're really pushing to increase tax credits. If you've followed some of the stories and in Columbus, the goal is to take those tax credits from $40 million annually to $100 million annually. And I think it's imperative that that happens. And Mayor Coach, if you want to add a couple things and, and introduce. Yeah, this is, uh, I, I told some people we're going to have a really, really big announcement uh, today at this event and uh, I think it's it's huge for our community but that uh, US Bank building uh, well let me put it this way Bedford will now be known as Hollywood Bedford 
Dakar Productions, led by uh, Miss Arlene Burks Gant, uh, former student at Bedford High School, graduate of Bedford High. She's been in the uh, movie industry for years and decided she wanted to come back home and give back to the community where she grew up and what she loves. And uh, if you want to hit that next button. The former building will now be Dakar Movie Production Studios. We are going to have Hollywood. Oh, yeah. This is big. We are going to have movie production uh, abilities right here in town. They're going to build a huge sound stage. Uh, who knows? Maybe we'll see some movie stars around town. But uh, the building is put to a use that we, we had no idea to look for a movie. Who'd think about moving a movie production into your town? You know, we looked for all kind of businesses and, and all this just fell into place in the perfect spot. Uh, they needed a place that was kind of secluded so they could do all their filming and stuff without being bothered by a lot of people. And with this bank building uh, shutting down, it, it just came together so fast. Uh, it was tremendous, tremendous. Uh, and we have, uh, representing uh, Ms. Gant, is Laura Klein and Cheryl Lewis, if you'd wave. So they're the movie people. And uh, like I say, it's, uh, it's going to be so neat just to have this production right here in town. Uh, uh, something we, we didn't, didn't ever think would happen here. And it's great. Again, thank you and take our wishes back to Ms. Gant. Uh, she's out in L.A. right now, but I, I, it's just exciting. And, and Tim Tench, you had a lot uh, of input. If you want to come up and say a couple words to it. Like, if I, I just want to mention it. Yeah, go ahead. And it, just to piggyback on that, I, I wanted to mention that this is something that, uh, and I want to commend Tim and, and the school district. You know, this is something that's kind of been on the radar. It's been in the area for, for probably well over a year. There's some things that worked out, didn't work out. Um, Tim and the school board and the schools have been adamant not to, we've got to try everything we can to try to keep this here. You know, Arlene is, um, as, as the mayor mentioned, although I don't feel bad that she's in LA, it's minus two here, I'm pretty sure it's not there. Um, <laughs> and I'll joke with her after that, but um, you know, she's worked with Sony Pictures as film director. She was actually a Hall of Fame inductee for Bedford. Um, to have that commitment to come back here and to have the commitment of Tim and, and his colleagues not to let that opportunity slip by. Listen, it very well could have, very well may have, but we're going to do everything we can to make sure that doesn't happen. And Tim, I don't know if, if you want to add a few words to that. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Mayor, I wasn't uh, prepared to speak today, but uh, I didn't want to let the opportunity to, to speak to this many people that are influential in the city to know what uh, Mike, in particular, did in this uh, endeavor. Uh, this was a project that was started over a year ago, and Arlene came to us uh, <clears throat> and uh, presented this prospect to us, and uh, the original uh, proposition fell through. She had, there was land going to be acquired, two different plots of land. The deals fell through. And she came to me. Actually, she came to Debbie Kozak, one of my former colleagues that uh, was in office at the time. She's, and, uh, and Debbie said, well, get in touch with Tim. So she called me, and uh, she wanted this project to work in the district. And so uh, I got together with our cabinet, and uh, Dr. Selico and Jerry and Janet, and I think uh, Dr. Johnson. We took a ride around uh, and looked at our property that we own, the school district property. It, start, it first started with the Chanel. We had that land, and we looked at Chanel first, but she needed more land. And uh, uh, so we looked at all of our properties. It, we couldn't accommodate her for what she wanted. So I approached Mike 
And I just told him, I says, you know, we need to look at every option for this lady. You know, she was, she was so determined to keep, and she had, she could have went to the west side, she could have went to the east side. I, I know, you know, Hudson, there's other cities that would have taken her in a heartbeat and given her what she wanted. But she wanted to keep it here because she wanted to give back to the community. She wanted to give back to the district, the school district, for the kids. And she's talking about bringing interns, using our, our students as interns in a movie production field. An opportunity that it would never have here, never. And so, you know, we felt as a school district it was very important to us to do what we, what we could. So I approached Mike and uh, <clears throat> we, were, we were kicking around some ideas. Uh, we found out the Chanel wasn't big enough. We didn't have enough land as in the school district we owned. And uh, I even suggested to Mike that we, we use Hutchinson and uh, tie it in with the park system <clears throat> because there's some seclusion back there. And uh, that wasn't even enough. And uh, we were kind of like, I thought, well, maybe this might die in a vine, but uh, I said, whatever we could do. So Mike called me, and he, uh, he says, I think I might have something. And he talked about the, uh, uh, the U.S. Bank property. Now, I've been here since I've been alive, which is over 10 years. <laughs> and, uh, and I never knew this property existed. Uh, Jerry knew. He knew where it was at. He'd been back there a few times. A couple other people knew, but I never knew this place existed. And uh, I, I drove back there, and, and it was like, if you've never been back there, you need to go there. It's incredible. I mean, it's just sits in the middle of nowhere, and you didn't know it's there. And so uh, he, uh, Mike presented it to, to Arlene, and she fell in love with it. And so that started the ball rolling. And uh, there had been some bumps, some major bumps. She's getting squeezed from the, from the West Coast. Her investors, they were ready to go, but she didn't have the land. And so uh, uh, there was a lot of work that went into it. And uh, uh, the nice thing was uh, U.S. Bank uh, was going to close. I mean, they, they, they had a skeleton crew there, and they were going to close, I think it was January 1st or December 1st, something just recently, maybe December 1st. And... Uh, <clears throat> Everything in that building was going. They were getting rid of everything. Partitions, desks, paper clips, everything. And they uh, offered anything that the, the Bedford City School District wanted, come in and help yourself. So uh, yeah, Jerry, our, our business manager, our, our operations uh, manager, uh, John Summers, uh, uh, Jim Myers, uh, our, our uh, technical director or whatever his title is, and they were, and, and Andrea was there, and they were like kids in a candy store with these little post-it notes, and we want this, and we want this, and we want this. And, and according to Jerry's statistics, they, they donated over $20,000 worth of equipment, desks and chairs, and, and so, you know, they didn't have to do that. So I'd like to thank U.S. Bank, you know, for that. I know there's nobody here from there, but uh, we appreciate that. And the bottom line for me, though, Mike, with the, these bumps and bruises and, and, and the, the, the bumps in the road that we had to go through, Mike bent over backwards to make this happen. And I'm and I, 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 not meaning to leave Stan out because Stan would gave him the reins and he's, you know, I mean, the whole console, you know, Mike was running the show and uh, if there was issue with uh, Prince, with uh, uh, information about the property, anything that Arlene wanted, she went to Mike and Mike make it, made it happen. And that wasn't, not just Mike by himself, I mean he had co cooperation with, the, with everybody that's involved with the city, but point is that we were able to pull it off. And uh, it's so exciting to have this opportunity for our students, for our city, you know, Hollywood comes to Bedford, like, like Stan said, uh, something that two years ago we would have, that was probably, not on anybody's radar. But uh, I per personally, uh, it wasn't me as a, a school board member. I happened to be in the right place at the right time. I was more like a, a citizen of Bedford, a lifelong citizen of Bedford uh, representing that. And I, that's what I felt like. I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. But I personally would like to thank Mike for all he's done to make this happen. 
uh, everybody that's been involved in it at any level. Uh, it's exciting times, and I'm looking forward to it. And thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Tim. I, I don't want to. Obviously, our, our staff played an integral part of that and a huge role. Um, we're definitely excited. I mean, there's still a lot that we need to work through, um, but I can't thank Arlene enough. I can't thank uh, Cheryl enough and Laura enough who are here. Um, you have to kind of look at this on a. It, it, it's not a, necessarily a movie. It could be a commercial. It could be a TV show. It could be a, a small production for an international um, um, production. There's so many other ancillary things that come with this. Who builds the sets? There's construction people that build the sets. Those are jobs. I mean, this is beyond um, where we go from here. You know, most of us don't know, but I think the potential is, is tremendous. You know, we're talking about sound stages, production offices, green rooms, multimedia opportunities, recording studios. And to be able to, as we talked about, also figure out a component that gives back to our youth, there's nothing better than that. I mean, that's how I look at it. And, you know, there's, we're, we're not there yet, but we are very, very close, and we're excited about it, and I just want to commend the two ladies that are here today, and Arlene, and we're going to get there, and I think this will be not only important for Bedford, not only important for Northeast Ohio, this is, this is beyond that. You know, the next closest one of a site like this is Atlanta, and think about it. I mean, yeah, you, you see some productions take place in the summer. You're not doing anything out there today. You know, the president of the film commission mentions that there's investment that wants to come here, but there's not a location. And we intend, and, and partnering with the individuals and the investors out west, we intend to change that. So again, thank you. I, I, I hope you take that back uh, to Arlene. Um, and tell her we don't feel bad for her because it's warm there, but tell her, you know, whatever we need to do to help to make sure this moves forward, we're here. And I want to commend the, the Bedford City School District and the board. So, well done. <laughs> Just trying to button up a couple things real quickly. Uh, we talk about where we're going, what we need to do. And I want to mention a couple other um, individuals that are here um, because there's great things happening. And I, I don't believe we have representatives um, from Data Basics. Uh, but Data Basics moved here about four years, might be a little more, but four years ago, um, and they have become a tremendous asset in our town. And they give back to our organizations, and they donate, and they're always there to help, and they're increasing their employment. And these are high-paying, good jobs, and huge, huge partner in our city. And as well as, um, we have another individual, I'll embarrass him a little, Michael Reyes. From Art of Beauty, I saw Michael sneak in. Um, Art of Beauty again. I mean, they are. There's a lot of exciting things happening, and we are there to help them because as they go, we go. And the things that they're looking at in the future, um, that's cementing their place in our town. And, and Michael, please take that back to, to your sons and your team. Um, we appreciate your commitment to Bedford, and we're here to continue to make sure you move in the right direction. And if whatever we can do to help, you know, just need to call us. So thank you. I appreciate what you're doing. The other item that I, that I wanted to talk about um, very quickly, and it's kind of like the priorities. We talk about our trail, but we also talk about 1B, um, and that's Tinker's Creek Commerce Park. You know, Tinker's Creek Commerce Park, it's, you know, we actively try to bring people here. Um, it's a tricky, uh, deal that was put in place originally. You know, it was originally put in place in 06, 07. Um, obviously, there's significant debt on that property with the county. Um, but we believe we have the right people in place. And the right people, what I mean by that is uh, Jennifer Kuzma, Frank Gambosi. We've engaged Cuyahoga County Land Bank, and we, uh, we approached uh, and engaged the lien holder, which is Cuyahoga County. And we are not settling 
for where it's at now to be marketed for 100,000 plus an acre for another 10 years. That's not an option. And if those individuals need to get at the table, if it's a property owner or which who I know is committed to it, um, but if it's the county or the land bank, we need to structure a deal today to make sure we see development there. And, and we've done that. Um, we're actually working through some legalities of that and we hope to make another big announcement um, throughout 2019 as far as the direction of this park and making it more marketable um, because we know the administration knows of businesses right now that will build and start expanding, but we need to come up with a creative solution uh, as far as that, uh, the debt and some of the components involved in that. So we are moving forward with that. Um, and Frank and Jen, thank you for, for continuing to push that along. Uh, I know I kind of went a, a little longer um, this year. Uh, it's cold. It's cold, want to stay warm. Um, <laughs> You know, at the end of the day, there's, there's a lot of good things, and we have a dedicated staff, and you know, I'm just up here relaying what those individuals do, what those 150 employees do every day, and I couldn't thank them enough. Um, that's who gets this, these types of things done. It's the staff, and we're not going to lie. I mean, do we have challenges? Absolutely. Sometimes those challenges are much larger than, um, than we would have thought, U.S. Bank. But when you have people like this in the room, and the schools and partnering communities and our business owners who are committed and our residents who are committed and our staff. Challenges might be big, they might be great, but that's not positivity breeds positivity. And we're gonna progress forward and our will to make sure that we overcome that has always worked and it's gonna continue to work. And uh, with that being said, I again, thank you for coming out in the cold, not fun. Um, mayor's got a couple last words, uh, and then if there's any questions or comments, but thank you. Good job, good job. And uh, Mike's pretty modest about what he does day in and day out, and he does a lot of work that nobody gets to see, and uh, just so lucky to have him as a partner up here to work day in and day out, and again, Mike, thanks for all you do. It's tremendous. There's just a couple things in closing. Uh, one, my wife probably thinks I forgot to introduce her, <laughs> as I once did, and haven't, haven't heard about it, or have not heard about it. But. Anyhow, uh, this Saturday's her birthday. My wife, Marilyn. Mm -hmm. Sunday. Sunday, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just so anxious for it to get here. Uh, <laughs> That's a good follow-up. Follow <laughs> but also this year, her and I are going to be married 50 years. <laughs> to my, uh, my high school sweetheart from Bedford High School. Yep. So, uh, love you, and uh, it's been a great ride for 50 years, and hopefully a lot more. And also with Marilyn is my mom, Jean. Yeah. She even came out in this weather. I said something, you know, you don't have to come. She says, oh, no, I'll be there. And, and here she is, 90 years old. And uh, it's great. Like I say, you can see why I'm excited about 2019. Things are happening. And they're breaking loose this year. Stuff we been working on for years and back to, to Dan and his administrations uh, and it's coming together like it's, it's an exciting time and I'm glad you're all part of it and uh, we're just gonna work together and, and move on and again thank you all for coming out on such a cold cold record-breaking day